Fellas, AC here. Welcome to our first collaboration. Mr. Smelly is in the house. And it's very kind of him. I requested him to be in one of my videos. And what we want to do today is talk about a lot of stuff. But primarily, it's all about Mr. Smelly's top five modern masculine fragrances. He's known for his exquisite taste. And I thought, what better way to invite this gentleman over to my channel and discuss his most favorite modern masculine fragrances. So, Mr. Smelly, welcome to the channel. Hello, AC. Great pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you, my friend. But before we get into the video, I'd like to talk to you about one of the things that has always been in my mind, and that is you've created this brand of yours, which is going beautifully to brilliant releases. So would you like to take us through the journey of how you started it, how to start a fragrance brand? I know it's some aspects are easy because you are a YouTuber with huge fan following and a lot of respect, but what actually goes into creating a fragrance brand? Just a little bit for our viewers, both our viewers. Over to you, sir. Sure, okay. Um... Yeah, so, okay, we, we, yeah, we, we've got two fragrances now, and there they are. So you've got, the first one was Gravitas Pour Homme, that one. And then the new one, of course, is Bon Viveur. And, uh, yeah, thanks for your kind words. So, yeah, they, well, okay, so creating a fragrance brand, of course, is, is quite a difficult thing to do. And my experience would be very different from m most other people who would do it because I did it with the platform of, of already having a YouTube channel. Um, so that is a huge <clears throat> advantage to me. So I can't imagine how difficult it must be if somebody is just, maybe they're just a fragrance enthusiast or whatever, maybe they're a perfumer or whatever, and they, they, they start, but they don't have any big following on social media. So that must be very, very difficult. So I, 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 a different thing for them, right? But I'll just quickly explain how we did it. So we are very much in my opinion and this is our you know an important point to make I, I don't really ultimately want this to be a youtuber fragrance brand in inverted commas uh, i would hope that we will just eventually be seen as a, a a good respected small niche fragrance house you know we'd like to be you know like pen Hadigans or florists or whatever or, you know a long way to go of course so we you know although i've used my youtube thing i i, I hope that we can uh, be taken seriously as a proper uh, fragrance brand. That's the goal. So that's that's what we're hoping to do. However, um, of course, uh, I, I used my my position on on YouTube to, to do this. So basically, what we did, of course, with the first fragrance, I floated the idea that I was going to release a fragrance, and we got it. Uh, we did a Kickstarter campaign. So Kickstarter, of course, is very useful because it basically it, it, it it's basically a pre order thing where people uh, give you the money and invest a bit of faith in you before you do the project. So what it allows you to do is you, you don't have to invest your own capital in the project. It's, it's paid for by the customers before you've actually made the product. So that now, of course, if I'd done that and I wasn't on YouTube, it would be very hard to raise more than £2.50 because who's going to pay for that? So luckily, lots of people who watch my channel thought that I would probably do a great fragrance if I did something. So I was very fortunate and thank you to everyone who supported us. So the Kickstarter campaign got us the money to fund the fragrance. That's great because I would not fancy, I, I really feel for people who invest their life savings, you yes. know, and buy it and take a risk. So we didn't have to do that. We, we, we had the money. So Kickstarter, a really good modern idea, fantastic. And then while that was going on, then of course you've got to do a number of things. One of them is to make get the fragrance, of course, the actual smell, and from a perfumer, that's the most difficult thing. Yes. Uh, but l l luckily, we we uh, we had a slight slight connection that my my business partner, Mr. Wilson, knew uh, John Stephen, and had studied on his courses and that kind of thing. So maybe he was some somewhat of a, a mentor, if you like, to to my mm. business partner in, in the in the fragrance world. And so he had that connection. And well, I'm. I, I mean, I'm not sure maybe other people could also find the right perfumer and, and pay them the money too, but it, that was a great start. And it just so happened that we were very lucky that he was really the perfect person 
to get to do the fragrance because he is uh, he's got 50 years experience in the industry appreciates the classic type of fragrances although he makes some very exotic ones now for Bodice or the victorious yeah. but he'd done check and speaks um, oxford and cambridge and the famous yeah. number 88 so real real classics from the 80s and 90s and so he was just a perfect person so it was actually quite simple that we just gave him the brief for what we would like a description talked to him we, we met him once and we there was a little bit of back and forth but you know that it, it was qu quite simple because we had such a good perfumer that that he really understood the, the brief and made the perfume and it was the same thing the second time so that part it, it, in all honesty perhaps we were very lucky because we have a really good perfumer who just it gets what we want it could almost be said that was getting the good smell, which we were lucky enough to do, was almost the easiest part. It's the practical logistic stuff that's the, the the difficult thing. But you wanted to say something, sorry. I wanted to ask you a question here. Mm. So you've explained beautifully the vision that you had, right? Yeah. The vision was that you didn't want to be just one of YouTube fragrance. You wanted, you want to create a niche fragrance house, uh, you know, uh, sky is the limit. That's a great vision to have, very clear yeah. vision. Next, you followed up with, obviously, there's a little bit of provenance, a bit of luck here. But I want to get to how you created in your mind that this is what I want in terms of smell. Mm. Gravitas is basically um, a fragrance which is very similar to your taste. So how do you construct it in your head when you spoke to Mr. John Stevens by saying, you know, this is what I want. Okay, that was um, not too difficult because I basically, we basically boiled it down to a, you know, a, 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 I don't, I'm not sure I have it, but a written brief of this is roughly what we'd like. So I just thought of all my favorite fragrances, what do I like? And, you know, I can't remember the exact wording, but we just said something along the lines, we would like a classic gentlemanly fougere style fragrance, because I like things like maybe Creed's Bois de Portugal, maybe Fougere Royale by Houbigant, et cetera, et cetera. We didn't mention those in the brief, but we, we would like a classic gentlemanly English, well, not English, a, a, a Fougere style fragrance with a classic feel, uh, you know, obviously some of the notes, you know, bergamot, everyone has that in the fragrances, but let's have some of that in there. A citrusy yeah. opening, of course, uh, lavender, uh, you know, I don't think Tonka beans are listed. Note, but that's a kind of it has to be in the. I think there is Coumarin or Tonka in the in the formula, and you know some oak moss that kind of thing. So we we just listed some of the obvious things that would have to be in there, and then I think well one of the stipulations that was I'm really glad that we put in was we would perhaps like a twist of vanilla, just to give it a bit of sweetness. Uh, and I was, I, I think my thoughts were influenced a bit by, by things like um, Invasion Bar Bar by MDCI, yes. which is, a, it still has that classic barbershop feel, whatever that means, but yes. that slightly semi-oriental <clears throat> undertone of a little bit twist of sweetness, uh, mm. because I wanted it to be in that vein, rather than something that smelled like, oh, it's from 1978 or whatever, literally, although I do like those too. So I wanted to make it in that vein because I thought that would appeal to a wider, a broader number of people. So, um, yeah, that, that was it really, just a classic gentleman. I've got to be honest, it, it, what you can say as much as you want and write a very clear s stipulation, but it's the perfumer who uh, creates yeah. a lot of the magic. You know, if you, you can commission yeah. a, a great painting or something, uh, mm. and um, ask for this and that and the other, but it's, it's, it's only once the guy actually does it or the, whoever's doing it that you'll, you'll, uh, you'll know exactly how it's going to look. So, uh, but, yeah. but you created a broad framework. For, yes, yeah. I think so. I think, yeah, it's like you, you create a draft or an outline in like a draftsman drawing something, yes. and then he, yeah. pro he probably is the painter who goes and puts all the colours in and that. So, yeah, but, yeah we, we, we talked back and forth. But, yeah. uh, it, you know, he was so well-versed in fragrance that he, I think he looked at the brief and it, I remember when we met him, he was very much, yeah, I can definitely do that. Like, that's, that sounds great. He, he wasn't sort of saying, oh, that's going to be tricky or you can't mix <laughs> that. And he was like, yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely do you one of those. So uh, it was, yeah, it was really, really uh, a, a, a pleasurable and natural yeah. process to do it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So... Now let's talk about the challenges you face because logistics part is the biggest challenge. Plus you went 
straight away international. You went to the United States market as well, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the, that that stuff is the real the diff. The well, yeah, perhaps the most difficult thing for me because obviously we'd like to have more customers. But I had it already had some people interested in buying it, so I was very lucky there. Um, but yeah, it's it's a difficult thing, of course. You, you, a large proportion of my viewers are in America, so you have that. That is the biggest market, so you, you've got to go there really be, if you p possibly can. Uh, and Europe too, but you know we've had big problems with that at the moment because of the. But yeah, so that's yeah. really difficult because fragrance is seen as a dangerous good because it's it's alcohol and they you know you might as well be um exporting bazookas or rocket launchers <laughs> they they don't like it so there's all kinds of stipulations and the sender yeah. has to have a, a qualification or certificate because john stephen actually produces it and and ships the one out to america and all that kind of thing so it's a real it's it, it's not fascinating to go into the details but basically the the, uh, the logistics also, we get the the we sourced all the bottles in, and the lids mm -hmm. came from a different place, uh, and the the label. The go so getting that stuff in the boxes are from within the UK. Mm. Other bits of the bottle come from elsewhere in the world. Sometimes they mm -hmm. have to spend weeks on a container ship. There's COVID going on, all of that kind of stuff, uh, and then getting it out to America. You can't. We can't just send uh, one bottle to a customer from the UK. It, or it would cost seventy pounds or something postage yes. and and fees. So it has to be shipped out in bulk, and then somebody in the states that we collaborate with then sends it to the customer. So that stuff is is a headache when you're not a big company set up to do. So yeah. it's it's all that kind of stuff that's a real headache, and mm. the practicalities of it when when you're not a big organization are are, are the sort of the, the thing that is difficult so far. Uh, but the actual the, the creative stuff and talking to my viewers and getting the, the people interested, I'm very that's that's been great fun and no problem. But the the back mm. end, yeah, the, doing perfume is difficult because it's it's uh, I don't know if it's even worse in the UK because we we have they, we're not allowed to post stuff. I don't know if you've ever tried to sell and friend a perfume in France or, <laughs> or sell one on eBay. It, it's a real headache. So yeah, it's 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 just the boring bureaucracy that that is really uh the, the the sticking point yes and just to give our viewers an idea you could send somebody a full bottle of scotch anywhere in mainland europe try right. sending a bottle of fragrance yeah it's crazy really it's I, I guess that's yeah unbelievable but you can climb so many mountains mm. and it's just amazing how much of a resolve is needed and, and matt wilson as well i mean both of you have worked tirelessly to get this brand going and i yeah. just wanted to give our viewers a little bit of idea what is involved in creating a fragrance brand so thanks for that i think there are a lot of input there there's a lot of um factual data here for people yeah. who would be interested in doing that so thank yeah, you very much i mean that's it's really great yeah up. Oh, thank you. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. It's really, really. I, but uh, of course, if you if you don't have that great fortune of the the following and the platform, then you've got a lot more other headaches. Because uh, I mean, there's so many new brands now, and that's great that we have all this choice. But you know, how, yeah. why should anyone be interested in if you're just John Smith and, and no one's heard of you? How on earth do you get people to be interested and buy? It must be very, very difficult. So I, I'm, you know, I'm very lucky to have had the. Yeah. the the boost. So thank you to everyone who's, who's put faith in me. Indeed. And and so many people helped you with your Kickstarter campaign. So that was very gracious and um, warm of people as well, didn't it? Yeah, I was really grateful for that. I, I think it's, it's nice for me and I'm lucky that because I carved out a, a thing for myself as someone who perhaps is known for liking a certain type of thing, Mm. I don't, you know, I, I just not, you can say, oh, he's into this kind of fragrance a bit with me. Mm. So people felt kind of confidence that if he does what I know, it will be that I, I bought stuff that he's recommended before and I think I'll like it. So yes. that was, I was, it was, I didn't do this deliberately, but it was good that I carved out a niche as the guy who slightly likes classic smells because you sort of knew what you'd get, you know? So Absolutely. that was good. Yeah. Brilliant. I mean, it's a great story and I really, wish and hope that it goes from strength to strength you've got, got two uh third one i think yep. would come soon and uh, yep. you've got a lot of people who are very affectionate of you support you and respect you so good yeah. things coming coming your way my friend i hope so yeah yeah so yeah the first one obviously a fougere the new one is a, a, a citrus aromatic stroke sheepra 
And so mm. it's kind of the difficult, there'll be, the, those are kind of no brainers because I love the fougeres and Richard. I love citrusy type classic smells too. Uh, yes. But the difficult third album is less obvious now. You've got to do something a bit different. But so that is, I've done the two easy free hits and now we have to be, get the third one right. So hopefully we can do it. I'm very confident you will. And best wishes to you. Thank you. So now let's get into our business end of our video. So yes. what I wanted to do is, because you've got such a wonderful nose and because you've helped so many people over the years, I just wanted to get five fragrances from you, which are modern and masculine in tone, because there's a, there's a huge market from my channel as well. I've realized people really have a lot of affinity towards fragrances that are uh, very clearly defined, not necessarily unisex, but clearly defined masculine sense and modern. Mm. So yep. what would you pick and why? All right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the, it was, you know, quite easy to pick some good ones, actually, because, uh, I, you know, I, I love the old school smells and things from yeah. yesteryear. But there's, there's really some good ones out there if you, if you know where to look, guys. So, yeah, sure. um, I've got five really good ones. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it in chronological order, but they're, they're all from the last at least within the last 10 years. And so let's let's go. Um, OK, so I've kicked off with. This one, I think that Valentino Uomo is a really, really outstandingly good fragrance and, and one that I sometimes leave on the shelf for months and then spray a little bit and remember how I first, I'll, I'll just, I'll spray yeah. one. I won't spray them, all, but I'll just do a quick spray. And it's a top yeah. notch choice. Absolutely. Totally agree. Do, do, do you like it? Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's a very, okay. very good start and masculine. Please go for yeah. it. It's, uh, I have to get the right Polge. It's Olivier Polge, isn't it? The man who also did Dior Om. And yes. he sort of made a, a cover version of his own fragrance in a way after it was reformulated by Dior. But it's, it's got much more to it than that. It, it does, yes. definitely does have that Dior Om-esque iris thing, although I don't think iris is an official note. There's a mm. semi-gourmandish twist about this fragrance. So you've got a sort of waxy lipstick Iris, it's quite metrosexual in inverted commas. So you asked for, uh, you actually asked for masculine fragrances, but I, it's probably called, yeah. it's a very unisex fragrance actually, but it is called Uomo, uh, which means man guys in Italian. And um, it's got a hazelnut or something called Jandurja cream, which I think is a fancy Italian version of Nutella really as the <laughs> fragrance note. And I, I tell you, I try to avoid eating it because it's very bad for you, but I do love Nutella. I mean, I could eat Nutella on toast. All, you know, just, I could live on that, so it's delicious. Um, but it's, it's got this subtle gourmand twist, but it's also got bergamot and freshness. I'm not mm -hmm. really familiar with the uh, isolated note of myrtle, but that's a, a little herb that, that's been used yes. in there. And it, everything mm -hmm. just, it's really sophisticated. It has that kind of Italian chic, and yet it's got a kind of um, slightly in touch with your feminine side type of lipsticky lipstick feel and yeah. um a, a, a semi a hint of gourmandish sweetness and it's it's just so delicate so beautiful it, it manages to be semi gourmandish uh, which can i would find some gourmand fragrances a, le a little bit tacky or vulgar but this one still has a very refined elegant feel yeah. so it's, it's a really really good fragrance you can I, someone said it might be discontinued but it, it seems easy to buy online at the moment yeah. so but perhaps hopefully it's not superb and a, a really really just a delightful modern release i think it was about 2014 or something like that and the highly recommended guys yeah superb stuff i think it's great starter fragrance for you know youngsters you're looking for something which is slightly on the masculine side and yet as you said italian chic style to it also slightly unisex so it wouldn't offend anybody if you're yep. going to a gathering you know the very very good pick i'm a big fan of that thing so i haven't um, reviewed it yet but i will know Good. Glad to hear. It. Yeah, it, it, I must say it doesn't actually, it's not terribly strong. So if you're looking no. for something really potent, this may be disappointing. But I think, you know, you'd be a great scent with your significant other. When they come close, they'll get a very nice uh, aroma. So, yeah. Fantastic. Do you want oh, another yeah. one? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay. 
Let's see what we've got next then. Uh, I want to go for Givenchy, a uh, house that I have a real affection for as a yes. big lover of their vintage, some of their vintage classics like Zarius and Monsieur de Givenchy, Givenchy Gentleman. However, I must say I'm rather taken with Gentleman Givenchy Cologne. Uh -huh. So about 2017, they suddenly released Gentleman Givenchy and confused everybody because they already had Givenchy Gentleman from 1974. So they did kind of what Dior did with Sauvage and Au Sauvage with kind yes. of using the traction of that name, but releasing a new product, which is, I get it, it's that's marketing, isn't it? Anyhow, yeah. I wasn't overly taken with the original Gentleman Givenchy Eau de Toilette. It was so so. There's a parfum, which actually is quite nice, uh, yes. or Eau de Parfum, which has, again has a bit of an iris thing, but I really love this one quite a recent release and it's the the cologne version and mm -hmm. it's a really fresh delightful beautiful fragrance it's got really nice fresh zesty citrus bergamot a lot of the obvious sort of things and it's just got this very very uh, didn't i didn't think about this but uh, funnily enough it's again an iris i think there's, a, there's this twist of an iris note Yes. which gives it this middle. very, yeah, just right running through the middle, not giving in a sort of waxy mum's lipstick types of thing that you do get in a nice way in, in Valentino Uomo and, and um, Dior Homme. But it's, it, it gives it this very kind of clean iris floral tone that I, I, I've appreciated in a few other fragrances recently. And it, it just melds perfectly with the citrus. Uh, and I think we had a tiny, well, we, we had uh, things like Dior Hom Cologne and things, but they didn't really have the iris. They, they just went kind of fizzy lemonade. But this yeah. captures that beautiful iris note with citrus and some other floral tones, crisp woods. It's, again, a very refined, everyday kind of wear-to-work scent, wearing a suit, equally mm. great in a, in a polo shirt or whatever. So we've got some warm weather here, perfect for today. Really, yes. really brilliant, brilliant, elegant scent and, and very much... Modern smelling, it doesn't doesn't smell classic or dated particularly, mm. but I, I love it. And a nice, nice, simple, but really well-made heavy bottle. Love it. I think, yes, indeed. I've I reviewed this one. I think it has got the oh. iris vetiver combination. I uh, think, yeah. if, if I'm memory yeah. serves me Yeah. Because, you know, as you were mentioning, there is this iris is not mom's lipstick style. And I've seen that when iris is combined with vetiver, it creates a little chalky, um, Chalky, slightly, yeah. yeah, slightly sweet, slightly, very slightly sweet green impression, which is very um, apt for any occasion. It's very friendly, very mm. amicable, and mm. at the same time, because it's got a little warmth of iris, it creates mm. a very, um, you know, very amicable conversation um, icebreaker. I wouldn't say icebreaker, but conversation started. Very nice fragrance. I, I really like your pick. And I think the weather has played a huge part in your pick as well. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, def definitely. Yeah. We've got, I, I don't know about you, but we've got one of the first properly quite warm days for, for a while. We've had a, a spring in, in England has been abysmal oh. this year. Yeah. Uh, but I've just been in the garden sunbathing for the first time in a while. And uh, yeah, this, this fits perfectly. So great freshy. Again, if you're looking for a real strong, potent scent, you might be a little disappointed again with this one. But I, I always say I'm very much a little bored with people who overly complain about fragrances that they don't find perform that well. So I'm, I'm really – and I used to be kind of into, like, beast mode top ten videos. But I'm very much looking – if it smells great, just – buy it and, 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 you know, use it a lot. Take the bottle with you, get a, a, a decant sprayer, spray more, and yeah. they you will be smelled. So there you go. I, I fully agree. If a fragrance is good, if it smells nice, I don't mind having it in my collection because I don't always want to radiate. Sometimes I really want something to cl uh, something close to me. For example, interviews. Yeah. yeah. White, yeah. white collar jobs. Um, yeah. You're sitting in a room small room having a meeting with two people you don't want to really suffocate them so there's a place for yeah. this and they're so elegant it's so elegant. Yes. I mean, this cologne that you show is super elegant i reviewed it last yeah. year loved it but i haven't got a full bottle oh, okay yeah it's uh it's one of my i don't i don't buy tons of new releases i don't buy everything that comes out but the, so it has yeah. to be really good and this one was one of the the few in recent couple of years that have, have been worth it for me and yeah I, I agree with you yeah there's a lot of situations like work and stuff uh, or meetings where frankly if someone walked in and they, they this fragrance hit you really strongly 
I wouldn't. I don't know if it would be that. I'm a fraghead, so maybe I wouldn't mind. But it it could put you off the person quite a lot, even if it was a good smell in a way. It'd be like, you know, a bit garish. So yeah, agreed. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'm giving an analogy. It's like a person who is talking on the phone but screaming and sitting right next to you in the train. Yeah. Or on the yeah. plane. Yeah. In the plane, you couldn't speak, but on the train, you you know, sometimes I take the very early morning train, and sometimes you know, there's a guy. Six o'clock in the morning, absolutely blaring it down. So a fragrance yeah. which projects a lot is exactly like that. You're invading my personal space. So that, you think, have to yeah, my, my I do. Yeah, I think in 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 situations where you're around a lot of people who have very little choice but to be in a room with you for quite a while, yeah. then yeah, you, you probably want to calm it down. Uh, I yeah, if you're going for a night out and stuff, then go nuts what the hell but yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely over to your next one sir right next up i i, I kind of thought maybe we'd uh go towards more designer choices but i wanted to do one niche one so sure. i've gone for this one and this is hubigant cologne intense and this is really 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 great so their more famous one in this this style of bottle is probably fougere royale yes. so i think it's around, around about 2015 they released uh, cologne intense i think it was luca maffe the perfumer unless yes. i'm mistaken he also did an early portofino for tom ford really? uh, i could be wrong but anyway this is the the idea supposedly is that they've reimagined a classic citrus eau de cologne. So one may think of four seven eleven, or one may think of Farina eau de cologne from the eighteenth century. But it doesn't really smell massively. So they've done a lot more with this than that. It always reminds me a little bit of uh, Dior's original eau sauvage in right. its aura, but there's still more to it than that. So be again, lots of beautiful citruses, lemon. Um, bergamot. I think there's a little bit of jasmine in here. There's patchouli in the base. There's this twist of mate tea, which again, I, frankly, I, 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 you know, I must admit, I, I've a lot of things. I, I'll say, oh, yes, there's this note, and there's. I was like, I've never smelt mate tea, so I can't tell you. You know, I don't have bags of myrtle to go and sniff in my <laughs> cupboard, yes. so I don't really know. But it's a beautiful kind of citrusy elegant fragrance but it's got quite a little bit of complexity a sort of airy feel delightful floral tones something of a a retro classic feel but you, there, there is this nice depth with some woods usual kind of woody tones that i think might be better but um oh there's a, a note of tarragon which is a, a nice oh. herb but it always okay. makes me think of uh, unfortunately it makes me think of chicken because it's quite often used to flavor chicken <laughs> I so, wish. Like, yeah but i can't really detach it on its own very easily but i, I do like these right. kind of green aromatic herbal tones in here and I it's see. Just really again classy elegant sort of european style perf perfumery at its absolute best and yeah I, I think a really really great choice as it could be a great signature scent However, I notice a lot of people when I mention it say they get a strange note that they don't like in it. And I've never got that at all. But you might want to sample this. A lot of people have it. It's some kind of honeyish thing that they think is a bit funky or, 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 you know, what's the word? A bit animalic or something they don't like. So I never very, pick up on that. But they go. I sampled it. It's very weird. So I was mm. very surprised when you picked this. But, oh, right. You know, I. Uh, I must, uh, I have tried it in winter, I believe. So I yeah. want, to, want to try it again. But um, yeah, to be honest with you, I wasn't very impressed with this. I've got a sample, official sample. Yeah. And I didn't, didn't enjoy it. And there was something weird about it. So it could be. <laughs> Everyone keeps saying this. Yeah. <laughs> it just, I, I thought to myself, okay, it's probably not for me. I sample hundreds of fragrances in a month. And yeah. uh, you know, sometimes you come across a fragrance which doesn't appeal to you. I try it again. So I might try it again um, this summer because you're, you're mentioning it. That means it must be good. So first time, I wasn't impressed. Fair enough. No, it's all about personal choice. That You know, there's no Absolutely. right or wrong. You, you can't be wrong. I always say you can't really be wrong about a fragrance. You know, it's, it's a matter of opinion. Some yeah. people like Some people like pineapple on a pizza. Some people think that's total <laughs> anathema. So it is personal. Well, how do you feel? Do you what do you think? Pineapple on a pizza, okay or not on? Uh, I'm okay. I, I, your food is a very personal thing. I mean, if people like pineapple on a pizza, I let them be. Uh, yes. Would I have it? Uh, no. <laughs> I'm the same. I wouldn't. I wouldn't pick it. Uh, yes. But if someone served up a pizza with it on, 
no problem. No problem. No problem. Uh, same with the scent, you know. Sometimes I don't like something, but I'm honest about it because as a reviewer, yeah. you have to be really honest by saying, "Look, I don't think I like this one." So, yeah. you know, sample it because, yeah, you might like it, as you as you said. But I'm going to give it a second chance because you said this, you you brought this together to this video. That means it's quite nice. I'll try it again. Yeah, yeah. I really, th yeah, I, I really think it's. I think it's excellent and uh, also reasonably. Or it certainly used to be reasonably well priced for niche. So, yeah. Yes, they are very well priced. Is, is it true that Roger has worked on this one as well? Because he worked in, uh, on the other one. I can't remember. A Fougere Royale. He oh, did he? Uh, I yes. didn't hear. I didn't. I didn't know that, and I hadn't heard anything about him being involved in this one. So. Right. Uh, I would assume not. Perhaps by the time they were doing this, he was very much deep into his own brand, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, no, yeah. I didn't know that about Fougere Royale. That's interesting. So the thing is, Fougere Royale, the current incarnation, was resurrected. Yeah. Yes. So when it was resurrected, um, Roger got involved with the project and he created. Uh, in my review, I think I mentioned, because I really yeah. like Fougere Royale. Me I like too. Fougere as well, as you know. So. He worked, he played a huge part in Fuji and Royale. And Fuji and Royale is a fantastic fragrance. But I promise you, I'll try this again because I've got an official sample of this. Because let's learn, uh, you know, something new. You learn something new all the time. There are many right. fragrances that I didn't like first. Yeah, and, then, yeah, mm. and then when I tried it again, uh, my nose probably matured. I appreciated it, it, it a bit more. It was good fun. Anyways, let's go to your fourth choice. Right, number four is going to be uh, Rochas, L'Homme Rochas. I haven't uh, tried that one. You, you have or you haven't? No, I haven't. Uh, I should. It, it's, I think it's really, really good stuff. It's uh, a 2020 release. It came out just before the whole lockdown thing. And it was, it was uh, Chris, Chris from Scent Lad did a really nice video on it where he was stood in front of the Eiffel Tower, which was, which was rather nice. And it's, um, the perfumer is Bruno Jovanovic, who I, th I think has a bit of a good reputation. And it's really a great masculine, all-round kind of fragrance. It was, I think, slightly unfairly described as perhaps a so-called blue fragrance, which I find this, this label very annoying. And people said that it was, oh, it's their version of Dior Sauvage or Bleu de Chanel, because a lot right. of fragrances have been out in recent years that yeah. have maybe a blue color bottle and a sort of a fresh woody, maybe slightly synthetic overall vibe that is obviously on trend and, and people like, but I don't think it, it, it I, I don't, I think that's a miss a, a way. It's a bad way to describe this one. I don't think right. it's much to do with those, but again, it's got lovely citrus notes. Um, I'm sure I pick up on some lavender, but it's not a listed note, but it's got a little twist of incense and Actually. some of your, your standard kind of woody notes, but it's, it's, it's fresh. It's masculine. It certainly doesn't have this vein of uh, Dior Sauvage esque Ambroxan or anything like that. It doesn't have any of that stuff, which I find a bit tiresome. It, it doesn't have that sort of modern shower gel esque vibe or anything like that. It's got subtle, delicate combination of a little bit of sweetness, a hint of a wisp of, of incense in the air, and a very sort of airy, not oppressive kind of amouage esque heavy incense, but just a, a light twist of that added to these very nice, delicate citrus notes, floral tones, and definitely an overall musky, not musky, so it feels masculine. I think a mas masculine woods. I feel yeah. there's a masculine woody undertone. Perhaps I think there's probably some vetiver in, in the base and um, really very, very pleasant kind of any day reacher. Bit more heavyweight though than things like the, the cologne. This would be a bit more of an all year round scent. So right. I think L'Homme Rochas is a great modern release. Uh, suitable for youngsters? I think so. Um, okay. I actually, I will say that it, it probably would be more popular with people from 25, 30 upwards than, than mm -hmm. real, real youngsters. So yeah, I, I always say, you know, if you're a young guy and you want to smell grown up, go for it. But yeah, it's, it has a mature vibe. It's, it's more of a, a 30 upwards vibe to me when I smell this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Brilliant. Actually, I, it's funny you should say that because I was in the subway, uh, you know, the, the sandwich shop the other day. Yes. And there's, a, there's a very uh, 
friendly, chatty guy, and he smelled. I was wearing Boucheron Pour Homme, the 1991 ah. release. Yes. And he'd, he'd mentioned my fragrance the other day, and he'd, then he'd found out that I was into fragrances. So he was kind of checking out what I would wear the next day. And he said this one was very much, uh, he kind of said it smelled kind of soapy and very, very much what he would expect. And he was like, no offense, he's Canadian, no offense, but something I would expect like my granddad to wear or something. <laughs> he liked it, but he definitely, he definitely felt it had a, an older vibe. Uh, so, you know, he, and he's in his twenties, I think. So I think, yeah, uh, definitely. There are some fragrances that, that definitely for the younger generation, they do think, oh, you smell grown up. Th this one is, is not as much like that as Boucher on pour on, but it's something to look out for if you are a younger person, hoping to attract your contemporaries or impress them. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah. The thing is, one thing I've noticed with the youngsters, and I'm sure you have noticed that as well in speaking to them is they tend to go for fragrances that their friends are going for. Mm. They tend to be less of a risk taker yeah. in bucking the trend. I've seen this a lot. For example, um, I was chatting to a guy and he was showing me fragrances and on his Instagram. Right. And he was like, talking to me about blue scent after blue scent after blue scent, metallic blue scents. I yeah. asked him, I said, have you tried your arms? He said, oh, it's too old school. Right. Really? <laughs> so, the Aurum 2020 is pretty, you know, pretty acceptable for a 20 year old. But yeah. people have this, uh, 20 year olds have this, I think, in my view, the uh, sort of a uh, resistance towards trying something which is outside what their group is wearing. Yeah. I've seen this many times. Uh, they're less of a risk taker, I think. Yeah, I think you're absolutely. Trend. Yeah, you're, you're right there. They don't want to seem weird or out of place. I mean, that's a big, it's, it's normal, isn't it? When you're a kid or whatever, you want the latest trainers that everyone else is wearing or whatever it is. And yeah, yeah. definitely into your teens and maybe even into your early 20s. It's, I think people, there'd be exceptions to that. But yeah, I think it's definitely social pressure to fit in and they kind of dress the same or they listen to the same music and stuff. Yes. And, you know, it's... Yeah. I don't miss being that age in, in that way. I'd like to be young in a way, but I, I, I feel happy that I've carved out my very much. I, I do this and I li like to dress like this and you know, I don't care what anyone thinks. But when you're that age, it, often it's, it's not that way. So I, I get it. You know, they wouldn't, it wouldn't be, even if they secretly loved Boucher on Poor Om, I guess who would really want to be a 24 or 20, no, no, let's say 19 year old and they turn up for the night out with their friends and the girls <laughs> are there. And everyone goes, oh, you smell like my granddad or my uncle, man. You know, it would, it would be, I get it. I, I can understand it. It's, it's not yes. easy to be, it's not easy to be young. And I, I wouldn't, in some ways, I wouldn't want to have to go through it again. Oh, some of the things were challenging. Yes, you're right. Yeah. You, you get a little bit more of a self-assurance, hope if you're lucky, as, as you get older. And now if you're I, lucky, uh, I like that. <laughs> well, don't know why, but I definitely, yeah, I don't give a stuff if people think I smell like I'm 65 or 70 now. And, you know, or if I met a girl or whatever, I'd, I'd be, not that I'm looking <clears> to, but if I did, I, I would be much more just be yourself. <laughs> Whereas if I was 21 or whatever, I might be thinking, <laughs> oh, what should I do? to make mm. her like me or fit in with her or, you know, mm. now I would be, well, you know, oh, this is me. <laughs> you probably won't like it, but I can't pretend to be anything else. But that, that only comes with many years of, of painful experience. <laughs> that yeah. you, yeah, confidence. Yeah. And yeah. confidence, right? Yeah. You have to have confidence in yourself. Yeah. It's about you. It's not about fitting into that girl's requirements. It's yeah. about you. Uh, and this is what people get wrong, right? Uh, and they still get wrong at 60. True. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, you can't really, and I mean, this applies to everything in life, but we're talking about fragrances. So with the point we're trying to make, I guess, is where the fragrance you, where, as Lania Smith says, wear what you like, not what they say you should like or love to like, uh, which is a great slogan. And, but it, yeah, it, it applies to life really most of the time. If, if obviously you have to make compromises in a relationship or whatever, but mm. if you're really trying to hammer a square peg into a, a round hole or you're yeah, in a right. position where you've got to massively change your actual general way of behaving, it probably won't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So let's move to your last choice. All what right, is it last, going to be? 
Last up, this one goes right back to one of my very earliest videos on the channel. I think back with misty eyes to the, whether the days when I started my, my grainy images on my channel. Yes. And it's Dunhill Icon from, oh, as you can see, it's got a bit of, yeah, 2015, a bit of wear mm -hmm. and tear on the lid there. And what a great release this was. It was Carlos Ben Aim, the perfumer, who, I mean, mm -hmm. Wow, because he did 1978's Polo Green. He did that. And then here he is in 2015, still doing great fragrances. The great thing, I wish I'd got the 100 mil in a way, but this is the fantastic bottle design from Dunhill. And they'd kind of had some pretty mediocre fragrances coming out for a few years, most people were saying. Um, very much a, a, a sort of English house uh, who were, uh, I think, you know, they made cigarettes mainly and, and smoking yeah. paraphernalia. I think they make watches too. So it's sort of an upscale thing. Mm. Um, but yeah, different kind of, it's not a different kind of vibe. I think they make maybe bags and I'm not sure if they make clothing too, but it's an interesting company. And um, yeah. This fragrance is really, really good. It's, uh, again, got a, a, a fresh overall feel. Uh, I think we maybe could describe it as a, a woody aromatic, I think, officially. Mm -hmm. It's got, a, again, some very nice, pleasant lemony bergamot notes in the opening. Lovely mm -hmm. spicy pepper in this one. Mm -hmm. Quite a lot of vetiver and definitely this kind of iso -y super undertone, which is, people have compared this a little bit to Terre d'Hermes which I, I, can, I can see that to an extent. Mm. So it's a little bit like a cousin of Ted. It's like a really good Ted Hermes flanker, um, mm. maybe. But it's, uh, yeah, it's got a, a spiciness, lovely kind of vet of a woody thing mixed with the citrus, which people will re recognize maybe mm. from, from Ted Hermes, but its own character, some lavender, this kind of barbershop feel. Classic, just clean, fresh. Uh, the bottled makes me like it even more. Very, very good all-rounder few flankers to this one the gold one absolute is also good this this has a note of oud which absolutely no one will ever smell but it's on the it's on the note listing the absolute gold one does have a, a bit of a tom ford mm. oud wood type thing going on in there quite pleasant too but this is the the, the smash hit for me and i probably put this in a category where those those 20 20 year old 21 year old people probably could wear this Mm. And it might not come off as mature as this. I don't know quite why, but what do you think about this one? Love it, mate. Absolutely love it. I reviewed it back in 2017. Yeah. For me, it's a neroli and cardamom in the middle, which makes it just heaven. I, yeah. I can't describe to you how happy I feel when I wear Icon. I've recommended Icon to at least two dozen people at work. Every single one of them, obviously my age group, and a few youngsters as well that come back and said their girlfriends, their wives were in love with them because the, the smell so beautiful. It's fresh. The floral aspect, citrus floral, the neroli aspect is what anchors the fragrance and keeps it very, very different than just a citrus vetiver fragrance. It's just amazing. The cardamom is beautiful. This is one of my absolute favorites, mate. Love it. Love it to bits. So I'm glad you picked it. <laughs> uh, yeah, superb, isn't it? And you're right. I just, as I sniffed it then, I forgot the Neroli that you do get that, which is really, really nice. But it's not just one of those Neroli uh, eau de cologne things, but it, the way they've <laughs> used it in here is, is so good. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and genius. Very, very, very classy stuff. Love it. Yes, absolutely. And uh, what are you wearing today? I forgot to ask you. Today, uh, have I sprayed anything at this point? I haven't sprayed anything because I was in, I was sunbathing in the garden. Yeah. So all I've got on at the moment is the ones that I've just sprayed in this video. I will be gonna. I'm gonna go. I haven't got it to hand, but I I must admit that mm. my if, if if the closest thing I have to a signature scent this year is Boucher on Pour on. Uh, a lot of my bottles are outrageously underused. That's actually got a few. Ah, brilliant. So if I'm in a, like, I don't know what to wear. I can't think. I sometimes, I've just for some reason, it's often a cheapie because I think, oh, well, <laughs> stupid because I could still use my creeds because I've got so many. Yeah. But anyhow, I just reach for Boucher on Pour on. And so I'm going to wear that if I go out and do anything later on, just go to the shop. So I, yeah, that, that for me is a go-to, Boucher on Pour on. I was, I, I'm, I'm testing it at the moment because I want to review it. Um, I'll show you, in honor of yourself, this is what I'm wearing today. Essenza. It is, it is paradise. I put two under my shirt, two on my shirt. 
just before we, um, I think we were scheduled earlier, right? So at yep. three o'clock, yep. three o'clock, I, I put this on. Mate, you're absolutely right about this one. This is, do you know, my first experience with this was horrible. I tried oh, it. Really? Yeah, because it has gotten a neroli which has been done in the classical French style, which is bitter and carbolic. And yep. my grandmother used to use those handmade soap. And she was a lovely, lovely lady. She used to love me to bits, but I didn't mm. like her uh, soap bars. And, you know, before eating, she would make me wash my hands. And that smell of carbolic neroli is yeah. what put me off when I first smelled this. But now I'm trying it. I mean, last year, I got this last year. And I wore it through winter. I'm trying it now. Today, I've got four sprays on. I'm in paradise. This fragrance smells absolutely amazing. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind why you love this so much. Because, mm. wow. And there's a note of clove, I believe. I can't remember exactly the note. That, that sounds but, familiar. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I'm getting this beautiful sweet, sweet and bitter neroli with clove, which is anchoring this, this um, fragrance. It's an outstanding fragrance. Absolutely amazing. Full review coming soon, chaps. Ah, I'll be very <laughs> interested. I'll be interested to see your review. Yeah, I know you. We we mentioned in the video you did on my channel that you love Intensa from them. So I'll be oh. interested to see. Yeah, I, th I think Essenza is, is just great. Yeah, as you say, good point that it, it's kind of a, there is a, a, a strange sweetness. Not strange, but you know, one one that you wouldn't expect maybe. And it's sweetness, we, we, yeah. sweet and bitter and fresh all at once, and just and, and I found that ladies tend to really think that's a very nice scent on a man from right. my limited experience but I've, I've had good feedback on that one yeah i'll keep that in mind when i review it yep. uh, so yeah that was my scent now we've talked about fragrances we have talked about your brands uh oh <laughs> there's something i know and there's something you know yeah. you do something that is quite attractive to women it, seem to, it didn't seem to work. <laughs> it never, I swear, it never, I never got anywhere as a result of it in that department. Right. But go on, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's end the suspense. Let's let's yeah. show them the object of our discussion. Okay, I'll have to. Uh, you may have to fill here a bit. Okay. All Let right. me grab it. Let me grab it. I, I don't. I'm very reluctant to do this. I'll be right back. <clears throat> well. You're going to While we wait, Mr. Shorts, because I was in the car. <laughs> that is typical, Mr. Smelly. Absolutely fantastic. So, while we wait for Mr. Smelly to come back, I was speaking to him the other day, and I was talking to him. Uh, I was speaking to him about what else does he do in his life, and he told me that he was a guitar teacher. So I said, "All right, bring your guitar to our collaboration video." So I just wanted to see how good he is on a guitar. Let's see, because he was a teacher. And I think this is one fact that you guys probably uh, are not aware of. And if you're if you are aware of, oh boy. So he's actually pulling it out of a, a lot of stuff. I think it's not been used for a long time. Let's hope he's not rusty. But you guys, what do you think of this collaboration? What other collaborations? Uh, you would like to see between me and Mr. Spelly? Do let us know in the comments because I think oh, this right. is. Oh, here, here he is. Here he is. Sorry. Um, Wonderful. Hang on. Right. Now, I didn't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I know. I couldn't even find a pick actually because I haven't played it in a while. So I've, I've got a 5p coin, so this could be really bad. Um, Go on then. So I used to be a guitar teacher, but I've, uh, since the lockdown, I, I wasn't doing it. Is Can you hear it all right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But since the lockdown, I, the, the few that I was still doing a couple of days a week, that, that kind of ended that. So. Um, I, I was, you know, I was. I had a few covers bands a few years ago, kind of doing kind of 80s rock, really. I, I loved all that. So I was. I used to be very into Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin. My uh, But I also like the. I really like hair metal from the 80s. Uh, I, I don't know what it is about it, but I just I like that kind of un 
ironic testosterone fueled music you know after um, that everything got a little bit more there was grunge and people got more clever with it yeah, I, I like the sort of um basic sexist lyrics and stuff of the side yeah i don't condone i i just love all that kind of thing but so i'm not going to play any yeah I, i'm very out of practice so i'll just do like a you need to uh <laughs> Oh, and I haven't picked it up for ages. So, yeah, Listen, I, I'm not going to do anything fancy. There you go. Well, this is just a start, right? We'll do more collabs. And... Uh, well, we won't do any more guitar playing, <laughs> I'll tell you that. No, I'm, I'm an ex-guitar teacher, and I, I, I can't say I'm massively into playing at all anymore. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a fun thing in my youth, definitely. Dan, wait for the comments and then decide. <laughs> I tell you, anyone who thinks that you get loads of girls from doing it, uh, you know, you might do, but it, it, if you're still sort of a bit shy and retiring and you're not out there, I suppose I wasn't out there playing in public as much as I should have been. Uh, yeah. But uh, it does seem to be something that does attract people a little bit. But, I, 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 you know, I can genuinely tell you that I never attracted one single member of the opposite sex successfully <laughs> due to my guitar playing. So, yeah. There you go. Would it be fair to say you did it for your own personal relaxation? This is how you relax. Uh, yeah, I think I was, I guess, I didn't think, I don't think, I'd no, not relaxed because I wanted to be good at it. So I practiced a lot. So I wouldn't say it was relaxing. It was It was something for a while I was just just heavily immersed in. Yeah. And uh, yeah, well, I, I tried to get good at it. But with like so many things in life, you, you mm. can be quite good at something, but not good. You know, you, you might be the best footballer in your school probably mm. doesn't mean that you're going to be good enough to go and play for Liverpool and become rich and you, you still may end up driving a, a, a lorry for a living so you know it, it's uh, and I ended up teaching which is great mm. but mm. as they do say those who can't do teach or well, you know, <laughs> if, if you can't do it to the great successful level just kind of teaching kids and teenagers and stuff is, is a nice thing to do but uh, not quite the glamorous life I perhaps dreamt of but that, that c'est la vie Things worked out all right in the end. Exactly. <laughs> I, prefer, and I prefer doing the YouTube fragrance channel now to doing that. Indeed. Too. And, and yeah, you just started amazing. a brand. Who knows? In, in a couple of years, you could be millionaires like Del Boy. <laughs> this time next year, Rodders, we'll be millionaires. Yeah. Exactly. I think Trot, Trotter's independent trading is about the where, where we've started from. Yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you relax? What do you do? What's the oh. leisure? Leisure, yeah, okay, interesting question. Um, I'll, maybe I'll ask you the same as well. But um, well, lockdown has been very, yes, yeah, has curtailed whatever one might do to a great extent. But I, I, lockdown has of all the people in this country who've had a good lockdown, I am it. It suits me down to the ground because I'm very <laughs> antisocial. So it, there were a lot of weeks where it hardly was any different to my normal life anyway. Um, so <laughs> obviously, I, I used to go to the pub a bit and stuff. <clears throat> I was the kind of person I'm, I'm really quite antisocial. I'm really bad at keeping touch with old friends and stuff. So, you know, yeah. I lost touch with a lot of people that I used to be mates with and they've all had, you know, they grew up and they have families and stuff. So I'm, I'm lousy at like making the effort to go and get the train into town and do the reunion. So I'm really bad. Um, I haven't been going to the pub since the lockdown, but I'm the, I, yes. I would be quite happy to walk into a pub on my own and stand at the bar. I've done that many a time. And when I used to live in an area where I knew people, maybe you, you, ch you whoever you knew, you would chat to a bit. So I used to like doing that. Mm. I, I do very much enjoy uh, a, a few beers. I really like craft beers, and I actually like oh. German lagers and stuff, which is not really craft beer, but good, good, not Stella, you know, like Warsteiner beer and stuff like that. I like yeah. a Duvel beer. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm very. Um, I, I, I'm, I definitely drink more <laughs> than you should do. But I'm at the point, in, as we were talking about earlier, I'm very much at the point in my life where it's, it's not life-threateningly bad and you've got to have some yeah. vice in your life. I don't smoke, I don't take drugs. So I'm just like, <laughs> I enjoy it. I live on my own, so there's no one else to be annoyed about it. Uh, so I, I very much enjoy in the evening maybe having a few beers and watching a good series or something on, on YouTube or the, the Amazon Prime. I was watching yeah. The Bureau. I don't know if you've heard of it, a French one, a yeah. detective thing, The Bureau. 
someone got me into it really good. I was I got into Breaking Bad a couple of months uh-huh. ago. I don't know if you've seen that. I thought that was really good. So I'll just do that kind of stuff on my own. So I, I like – this doesn't sound good. I like drinking alone, <laughs> watching, a good, good? watching a it's... good movie or whatever. That's great. I'd love I, – now that lockdown's over, I'd love to get out there and socialise. Hopefully I will. So I love doing that. And I like – I don't know if I like it, but I go running pretty much every day quite right. a long way. And, of course, when you're in your 40s and you like a beer – you kind of have to do that if you don't want to get ch- chubby. So I, I pay a heavy price for my affinity for beer, and I go running quite a bit every you know every day, quite a long way. And that's uh, one of my other big hobbies. What else? Oh, I'm into watches now. Just oh. into collect collecting old watches, vintage watches has become a, a passion in the last six months. I used to buy nice. sort of ones that were sort of the cheap ones that look like a Rolex but they're not mm. and they were but, but now I've graduated to buying on eBay it's a real uh, minefield though because obviously yeah. old watches are great I love uh, what I love is that they have character and mm. they're mechanical they're not digital it's not an mm. iPhone or an iWatch they are from the the old century the mid 20th yes. century and I find that really charming and I love that and but of course if you're buying them second hand Mm. Most of them will, will will not work perfectly, so you don't have to send them off to a, a skilled person. So it can be a little bit expensive, but that's yes. my new my new thing. I, I actually spend more time watching watch people on YouTube now than I do fragrances. But I, it's good to have more than one interest, I think, so you don't get. I stale. think so, and, and that's very impressive. And I just want to make one point. Yeah. Do what you like. It's your life, buddy. Yeah, yeah. that's it. What about you, Good. though? What? Yeah, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I'm lucky now, although I'm single and all that. Some, you know, maybe that's uh, not a good thing in some ways. At, at the age of forty, where I don't have a family or kids, it does give me tremendous freedom to sort of uh, pursue the things that I find uh, entertaining without ever having to take anyone else into consideration. Which at the moment is a nice feeling. But what what about you, AC? What do you do? What hobby have you got? Any other hobbies? What do you do in your spare Anything. time? Anybody. First of all, I live my life guilt free. Whatever Good. I do, yeah. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't smoke. I used to smoke. Oh right. I, okay. Even now, uh, my leisure activity primarily in summer has to be gardening. I, I have a huge garden, and I love gardening. Green fingers. I love growing fruits, vegetables, flowers. Oh, yeah. I love nature, basically. It's my big Good. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So mostly I'm, I'm in the garden. Uh, nowadays, lockdown. But we have a very punishing work schedule. I mentioned that in my last video. Mm, yeah. So on a weekday, my biggest relaxation is cooking. I love cooking, as you can see from my figure. Uh, I love uh, eating you look, well. You look fine. No, no I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> so, biryani is my main thing. The city that I was born in in India is famous yeah. for biryani. Biryani, so, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll cook you one once you come down here and yeah. <laughs> you can enjoy. Uh, for me, it's cooking. Uh, on a weekday, I always cook fresh. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. my biggest relaxation. I love that's leisure for me. It's very uh, sort of meditative for me. The other Good, thing yeah. is, like you, I don't go running because I play summer sports. Every right. Saturday, I'm out playing cricket or Sunday. Oh, yeah, nice. I'm playing at home yeah. because I hurt my ankle. Sorry, go on. Uh, yeah, well, of course, India. I mean, you guys, cricket is the sport, uh, isn't it, in India? Yeah. It is. And <clears throat> I was fortunate enough, like your guitar, I was a very yeah. outdoor person. I mean, I used to be a motorcyclist. I've stopped that. I sold oh, my right. motorcycle back in 2016, 2017. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. So uh, I might start that again. Um, yeah. I was not using it much, but I'm, I'm a sporty guy. So mm. I play first eleven cricket. Still play first eleven cricket. Oh great! Yeah, it's oh, my brilliant. biggest. What what, what, uh, what team or club are you in? Could you tell us? So I, yeah, of course. I used to play for a, a local club called um, Go Taker. I've given up because during the lockdown we were having issues with getting games. So this year I think I'll I'll join Swindon. I don't know. I might play for some other club. Uh, there's a right. friend of mine who plays for Marlborough. Um, I might go and play for them. I don't know. Um, Are you a, a bowler, a batsman, or an all rounder? I'm a batsman. I'm a batsman. batsman. Yeah. yeah, that's the more but, fun part, I think. Yeah, it's not fun in England. I tell you, oh. I'm a top order bat, so I open the batting. So if it's uh, oh, right. if it's overcast and the ball's moving about, um, it's not. It's not 
leisure. <laughs> it's not leisure, I can tell it's you. It's dangerous, that. yeah. I hope you've got a, a good hat. Yeah, it's very dangerous. I've got a, yeah. I've got a very strong side. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't because, fancy that. No, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's leisure for me. And reading is my biggest passion. I don't, I'm oh, not right. watching... I'm not into television. I don't uh, watch any huge, um, other YouTube videos. But yeah. um, big deal for me is books. I love reading. And yeah. as I said, you know, I don't drink. So my, my leisure is definitely a good book and a good meal. <laughs> That's good, yeah. I, I, you've got to have stuff that you look forward to each day. And if it's your, you know, you enjoy the meal or whatever. But I, I guess in India, the uh, English addition to your, your great culinary tradition, of course, which everyone in well, Britain loves curry, but I uh, imagine that, that in your country, it doesn't necessarily have to be accompanied by six pints of lager. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> a, a unique English uh, twist, I would imagine, yeah. The, um, thing is, the thing is, in India, people are used to eating hot food. And yes. I understand that to numb the hotness of the food, that's why the English go for the pints of beer. It is great. It. Yeah, yeah, it is great. <laughs> So yeah. yeah, I mean, I, food is I love hot. I love hot food. I love I love curry as well. But um, I can't. I find that I I can eat a really hot curry, but I would never like eat one on a a date or something because I start sweating and yeah, <laughs> I go really red. I like the taste, but it, it yeah, I have to be careful. So what's the hottest you'd go for? Would you go for a vindaloo oh, or a fowl? I've had it. I do. I love when I've had a vindaloo. I did like it, but I think I have to sort of eat it at home, <laughs> you know, because it, it really does make me go red and, and start sweating. So I, I would probably, you know, it's, it's not hot stuff. It'd be more like a, I'd order a Danzac or something like that. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, the uh, Balti can be very nice, too. So, but like, what I don't know is how much what we are served in in uh, Indian restaurants is is really what you guys would would cook at home. Probably not so much. Not even close. Not even close. Uh, no. It's completely different. I mean, I'm from the north of India, so yeah. north of India is very aromatic, and right. uh, here the emphasis is on sauces, base sauce. So if you order a vindaloo or a gansak, it's yeah. a base sauce with the flavour being very little. Uh, very little difference between those two. Yeah. So I'll, I'll cook you some authentic stuff and then All right. really, it's not necessarily hot, but it's very yeah. aromatic. It's, that's um, good, yeah, yeah. That's the thing about um, the food from north of India. It's very aromatic. It can be hot, depends on which area mm. you're going and visiting. But yeah. most emphasis is on contrast of flavors and, and aroma. It's in the, not in the food is all about that, especially mm. Mughlai. Um, food. The tandoori. The tandoori is a not in food. Biryani, the pulao, uh, they are all aromatic and they're, mm. there's contrast. They're sweet, sour, hot, and then rice. It's just yep. amazing. Uh, it's very scientific. It's very different to what is served here. Absolutely. Yeah, I, we'll I, I kind of gathered. <laughs> I'd, yeah, I'd love to. I, I've never had it cooked from from an, you know a normal person. It's always been from a restaurant, so I'm sure I've I've missed out on the real thing. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's definitely definitely. Uh, I know that it's like hugely rich and varied tradition that that probably most of us who, who just like a, a good uh, tikka masala <laughs> have very very little understanding of. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted the one other thing. My other little hobby is I do enjoy following the football. So oh. um, I support Tottenham, the, oh. the sort of underachieving <laughs> club of, of London. And uh, so that, but that's, I, I quite often, you know, if I'm going for a run or whatever, I have the podcast of people <clears throat> taking apart the latest uh, catastrophic defeat or, or you know, something uh, kind of therapeutic about that. So I enjoy following the football, although I, don't, I haven't played for many years. So uh, mm -hmm. unlike you, uh, you like the cricket, but... Uh, I, I was. I never could. Uh, never could get into cricket at all. I'm afraid. No? Yeah. Not I used to be, school. No. Well, it was football was just the thing that everyone, you know, as you know, football is the bigger sport here. So that was what everyone nice. played, and 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 what what we were most excited about. But I, I definitely remember the the day when it was summer, and my group of friends that I played football with decided that they were going to play cricket. Instead, I was, you know, with a tennis ball or whatever down the, the local park. I was absolutely furious. I was so disappointed because I just, you know, I was a very much, I, didn't, I hated rugby. That was a, a uh -huh. tough sport, you know, posh, posh public school sport to me. I never liked that. So I, I was very much football or nothing, I'm afraid. So why Tottenham? 
Where you born that? No, well, no, but I'm from Barnet, which is North London, so yes. it's, it's not a million miles away. So if, if people, if they lived in Barnet, which is a sort of rather yes. dull, dull suburb of, of, of the very northern tip of London, it's not, it's barely, it's kind of Hertfordshire, really. Um, ah. You would either probably support um, Tottenham or Arsenal from that part of the ah. world, although there is a Barnet football club, but uh, mm. not so not so fun. Uh, so all, uh, when I was growing up, of course, all the kids, half of them, supported Liverpool because that was the most successful team so they were just glory hunt they they were glory hunters and I was a I was a mini glory hunter because believe it or not when I was picking my team in about 1984 they Spurs were the glamorous team and they had a a, some really good glamorous players like Glenn Hoddle and Ozzy Ardiles so it was was the most exciting team in London and they had been recently at that time quite successful and I think there was just one season when I was just at the right age to to properly get into it, that they they were top of the league for a while, so I stupidly picked them, thinking this could be a happy life of of glory, and they never they never won the league that season, and they've won very little since. But yeah, I was just it was just the exciting team back then. Uh, but, Wonderful, and and you can't change horses, so I had to stick with it after that. Do not do not change horses. Well, I think it's absolutely, I know people who, I think if you're six or seven, maybe, I think that the year before that, I was calling myself a Liverpool fan, but that was only because the other kids, the, the, toughest, the, the leader of the gang in the playground said, you have to support Liverpool to be in our gang. Uh, but uh, yeah, I changed at about the age of seven or eight, but much older than that, if you change, I think it's, I knew a few people who used to support Spurs and swapped to support Arsenal in their teens. And that is that is dishonourable. You cannot do that. <laughs> You've got to stick with it. <laughs> so uh, that, I think that's a fantastic, you know, interview or uh, a collaboration. I, we got to know so much about you. I yeah. think uh, both your subscribers and my subscribers are going to relish this. It's a long I video. So. So, yeah. Um, I do apologise if, if uh, it's not in your scheme of things, but... You know, we talked about so much stuff, and I think this was great entertainment value. So thanks, yeah, thanks for being a great host. And I, I yeah, I must, I'll get you back on because I didn't get so much out of you about yourself. And <laughs> you know, I, I stuck to the the fragrance stuff, but uh, you've twisted my arm here to reveal a bit more than I normally do. So I, th- I think we'd like, I'd love to do the same with you. And yeah, you know, I, I that, go on, yeah. I, I, I think uh, what we've got from you today is going to be very interesting to a lot of people. So. You've done so many things in your life, but you're so modest that you never speak about them. It was great to have you. I think it's going to be absolute fun for people to watch. And I'm, I'm surrendering. Whenever you want me, I'll be there. <laughs> so. All right. We'll think of a fun video theme and we'll get you back on and do Yeah, I'll, I'll get a bit more about your, uh, your, your life story, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. And thank you for uh, being here, mate. And thank you for making your time available. It's brilliant. Really enjoyed. Pleasure. Pleasure. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Take care.